All right, Celebrity Josh here. That's me with the tax mechanic, Fraser Simpson. And we are here for another episode of Celebrity Josh with the tax mechanic, Fraser Simpson. How are you doing? I'm good. I had a bit of a cold this week, but I'm feeling better now. And we've upped the production values. I've got a mirror behind the camera now, so I can film with my big lens, and the mirror shows me what's on the screen. So we're in higher resolution today. I got it for $3.50 at the dollar store. Can I expense that? Very nice. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. So we're already making, I don't know if that's making money, saving money. We're doing something. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about uh, a court case, and a tax court case, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what we do here at the Tax Mechanic. So uh, this isn't a case that I've done, but it's a, a similar one. Um, in that uh, the judge, uh, or the case went up uh, in front of uh, uh, a judge in Calgary, and uh, there was unreported income of over a hundred thousand dollars. And this is all redacted, so I you know I can show this. Everywhere. Yeah, is it Trump? That's that's it's not Trump. <laughs> okay, sorry. And is it Trudeau? <laughs> it's not Trudeau. Is it me? <laughs> it's not you. Okay, well then we're good. Uh, so. So they had unreported income of one hundred two thousand, and it was reduced to zero. Uh, also, the appellant uh, was allowed to uh, deduct purchases uh, of sixty-seven thousand, and uh, further business expenses of one hundred eleven thousand. Uh, also, they were allowed to claim a capital cost allowance of sixteen hundred, and the penalty that was assessed under one sixty-three two of the Income Tax Act was deleted. That penalty is for gross negligence. So, what has happened in this case is that. Revenue Canada uh, did an audit on this fellow and uh, saw some uh, deposits and um, assessed him income for it, but it wasn't actually income. So because it was challenged and went to the court, it was determined that it actually wasn't income. And the judges don't like it when you know they, they assess income like that, so they, they hammer uh, Revenue Canada pretty harshly for that. And that's what we do. We do that at the tax mechanic. So if, if you've been assessed uh, uh, unfairly by Revenue Canada or you've uh, been through an audit and they've raised an assessment, come and see me because I can tell you, uh, you know, in a half hour consultation what I can do for you. Um, in a case like this, 100000 from deposits that were clearly not income, uh, they're probably shareholder advances or um, you know draws or uh, balance sheet items off balance sheet there's an, a number of things it can be so revenue canada is fairly they're like a bull in a china store they they just go and assess everything and then it's up to you to go back and fight it in court and most people don't they end up just paying the tax or they don't know what to do they feel overwhelmed so that's a typical situation there it can be you know uh, I could save you, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars if you just come and see me. I would love to have you save me hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this guy, because what you know, when you first showed it to me right there, I was like, oh, he must have been like hiding the hundred thousand dollars, and they came after him. And but this was a case where he didn't do anything wrong. He's like, whoa, whoa, that's not, you know. And but they were just like, no, we're gonna. So they took him to, like right away. They didn't even ask. He had, he was like brought to court or. Uh, well, actually, he was uh, Revenue Canada did the audit. And then what they'll do is they'll send you a letter, or a letter afterwards and say, you know, we've determined from our, it's a determination. Yeah. And they determine that, you know, you have got $100,000 of unreported income. So they assess you and all of a sudden you get whacked like a forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 tax uh, bill oh, okay. plus a penalty, which is like double that. So it can be a hundred grand. Right, right. So now you're left with this hundred grand letter. And you're like, what am I going to do here? Now, if it's just yourself, you don't know what to do. Right, I can't just email back and say, no, no, no that's no. it's all good. You can't dispute it. Or you've yeah. got to go to tax court, get somebody like me to represent you. Mm. And uh, you can do a lawyer or me. But I, as I said before, many uh, you know episodes before, is that you know, a lawyer will, there's two streams you can go, formal or informal. If you go formal, it'll cost you a ton of money. And... Uh, a lot of headache and you won't uh, necessarily win because they take them more serious. You go the informal route with a guy like me, I make sure that uh, everything is sorted out beforehand, you usually negotiate beforehand uh, so that I don't have to go to court and I always win in tax court because I, I only take simple things like this where you know they've obviously made an error and they right. do make an error or their judgment is wrong many times. Okay. No offense, CRA. Like, no we offense. still love you, you know, um, but you're always wrong. <laughs> often, well, often. 
Well, sometimes. if uh, like I said, in a half hour consultation, I'll look at it and I'll I'll be upfront with you. If there's nothing I can do, I I won't. You know, I'll tell you straight up. No, you you've got to pay the tax. Yeah. But if it's been almost always, I can find something. Yeah. I can find something like maybe it should be half of what it is, or they've accrued a benefit that shouldn't have been accrued, or they they typically will issue a lot of penalties and different types of penalties, and you have to know how to to uh you know fight those and the merits of each penalty so a gross negligence penalty they have to prove that they can they can assess it but then in court they have to prove it and it's very difficult to prove in court because you, you have to just go Ooh, that's gross that's, <laughs> no. I don't like that negligence. it's gross they have to, no no no, no. You, you've got to go to tax court and do that so um you know come and see me you know just one more before we uh I time. think we run out of time. I think oh, we're still doing time. We had the time. Right? I think we, we have time. five minutes, though. We got the. Oh, oh we, we got four minutes. minutes. Okay. All right. So here's another one. It's uh, this guy's uh, had about. Uh, he had six years arbitrarily assessed by Revenue Canada, and he ended up with a, a tax bill of about two hundred thousand, and penalties of two hundred thousand. So he's at four hundred thousand. So. Who the, are these people? <laughs> well, the, they're the, making actual money. They're not doing YouTube videos. That's no, what they're, they're doing. not doing YouTube videos. So this guy sells uh, eyeglasses and healthcare products and that, and he's, he, he does fairly well. Um, so he should have reported, and his his tax bill should have been, uh, you know, maybe about fifty thousand dollars over over that period because he had some losses. So. Because they arbitrarily assessed, what they do is they just, Revenue Canada just makes up the numbers and says, based on your previous year, we think that you made another 200000 or something or 100000 And they just guess and, and yeah. do the numbers and you end up with a big tax bill. So uh, this one is my case. Yeah. And I uh, can't show you this one because I don't have anything redacted. Did but there is a gold star. Did he have the glasses that you're wearing? Did he sort of have a little barter thing going on? Uh, no, he didn't. But I, yeah. I, I, he, was, he was kind of a funny guy because he was... He said, uh, you know, how should I dress for court and that? And this is actually a kind of a good comment. I said, uh, you have to dress nice, you know, in a suit and everything. And not like this. Not like this. And, uh, well, I'm, Maybe like that. You're I, like a hybrid. I'm, you're like me a hybrid. with a I, suit yeah. jacket on. I, I actually go with a tie every time. Smart. And the reason is uh, because you're showing respect to the judge. My client was thinking if I go, you know, to the nines, he thinks I have money. And therefore right. assess them, but that's not the case. You got to show respect before the money thing. Okay, so okay. wear a suit and a tie in tax court. Everybody all the time. Yeah, he's probably thinking you owe, you owe four hundred thousand dollars. You can afford a suit. You're not fooling anybody by coming in dressed like Celebrity Josh. Okay. Exactly. So uh, in this case here, uh, they uh, submitted. Um, uh, you know, the, the whole process is uh, very convoluted because uh, the Department of Justice called me on the Friday. And we had the hearing on a Monday. So I got this adjourned just because they didn't give us enough time. But that's typically where Revenue Canada is buried right now. So, again, it gives you an opportunity to any assessment that you have. It's really worth a call to me to see if there's anything I can do because I can almost challenge all of them. It's almost like, you know, they say when you get a parking ticket or a traffic fine, even if you're in the wrong or whatever, even if you, if you go to court, sometimes the cop won't show up or there'll be something or just for you showing up, they'll be like, fine, we'll bring it down a bit. Like, so is there some value almost in any situation saying let's challenge it? A bit? It's a very good analogy. In, in traffic court, you know, you go and challenge the ticket, they almost invariably will reduce it just by you showing up. And in tax court, part of that is like that here you've, uh, you know, hired somebody, engaged somebody to represent you. You know, you, you file your documentation. It's pretty hard for them not to, to, you know, rule in your favor somewhat or to let something go, like let some penalties go or reduce the interest. You wore a suit. We'll give you $10 off. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go get it dry cleaned for the next time you're in court owing half a million dollars. Well, I, I've seen the mistake that taxpayers make is that uh, I, I've seen this so many times is that people go in and represent themselves. And almost every single time they get uh, their case dismissed or their appeal dismissed because they simply haven't filed the proper documents and the judge they will not put up with it as soon as they see self-represented they, they look at the documents and go you don't have an affidavit dismissed yeah you don't have, you, i'm the judge you don't think i'm worth a lawyer you know you gotta exactly. yeah that's that's really what it is yeah. um 
in uh, in the informal uh, procedure uh, uh, courts, uh, it works fairly well. It's you know it works in the taxpayer's favor because they, they see me. I usually start off and say, Judge Your Honor, you know, let's uh, quit quit uh, with all the legal stuff. We're just here's the taxpayer here. Let's have a conversation. This is what happened, yeah. and uh, I put that in an affidavit and I make it very straightforward. I you know get to the core right away. Tell them what we want right away and make it easy for them. And uh, normally they, they'll look at the, the Department of Justice and go, why are you bothering this taxpayer? How come they, they, he offered this? How come he didn't accept that? Right. And these guys are young bucks. So they're trying to make a name for themselves. So they try to, you know, uh, squeeze the money out of us. But the judges don't like that. So uh, it's really beneficial. I, I keep repeating myself saying, that, you know, if you do have a situation like that, and you've been assessed, you've been through an audit, um, give me a call, half an hour, uh, I'll tell you which way to go and if you've got a chance in court. All right, so the judges are like the parents and then, you know, the the tax, the, the CRA is like the little brother and the judge is like, stop, you know, why are you bothering your little brother? You know, just do whatever, like it's, it's all, all right, and then we bring you in and... You're the accountant. This analogy doesn't work at all, but we're out of time. Hopefully, we can squeeze under the 10 minutes for LinkedIn. Uh, go to taxmechanic.ca. Tell them Celebrity Josh sent you, and you'll get a huge discount and then free half a million dollars. I don't know. Uh, don't hold me that to that legally. Okay, bye for now. Bye.